Hi, I'm Jade. Hi, I'm Ava. Hi, I'm Eva. And, and we, we are LLU News. First up is Jaden on Catalonia Breaks Away from Spain. Hey, this is Jaden reporting to you in LLU News about Catalonia, a country next to Spain that decided to leave Spain. This first started in October of 2017. The people that were involved in this were the President of Catalonia, the National Police of Spain, the Spanish Government, Spain's Senate, and Spain's Prime Minister. The people of Catalonia had a big problem on their hands. The vote to leave Spain all started it all because the people of Catalonia felt that Spain wasn't giving them as much support as they were giving Spain. On the first day of voting, the Spanish said that the Catalans weren't allowed to vote, but they kept on doing it. The Spanish sent their national police and they started to confiscate ballots, threaten voters, and pull people out of polling places. As a result, nearly 900 people were injured, with I, which I think shouldn't have happened. A few weeks later, Spain's Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy said no government of any democratic country can accept that the law be violated, ignored, and changed. This means that Catalonia's president is committing a crime. Later that day, the president of Catalonia, Carles Puigdemont, said democratically deciding the future of a nation is not a crime. But in the end of the day, Catalonia still remains a part of Spain. I'm Jaden reporting to you from LLU News. Back to you in the studio. I didn't know that. Thank you, Jaden. Next up is Ava on California wildfires. Hi, I'm Ava reporting to you from LLU. We all know that fires are horrible, but what would you do if you had to experience a wildfire? On October 2017 in Santa Barbara, California, strong winds knocked down nearby power lines, causing sparks to catch fire. This massive fire injured firefighters and animals, caused 34,000 people to evacuate, and was responsible for 47 deaths. At this time, people are getting ready to face the challenges ahead. I would be so scared if I were living there. Let's get on to what officials are saying. As of right now, cleanup will take weeks or could take even longer. Lots of Californians are saying it's never going to be the same. Many people are glad they found their homes still standing. However, many homes and businesses have been destroyed, 5,700 to be exact. Lastly, the Red Cross is providing a place to sleep and meals for victims. Overall, wildfires are dangerous events that could change your life. Back to you in the studio. Wow, good job, Ava. Here's Eva with hurricanes. Hi, I'm Eva, and I'm here to talk about hurricanes and how dangerous they can be. Hurricanes are storms that hit so many places and cause much damage. Flooding, many injuries, houses destroyed, power outages, and some lost pets and children are just a few horrible things that can happen because of a hurricane. It is sad how much some hurricane victims have been through, right? Hurricanes are not just plain storms. If people don't leave the area or do not take shelter, they may not survive. Hurricanes are very powerful. They move so fast and the strong winds can, winds can pick up objects and send them flying. Imagine if you were in that storm, it would be pretty scary. Texas has just recently experienced a very strong hurricane. Millions of Texans evacuated before the storm, which kept them safe. However, an estimated 30,000 people waited in shelters. Because they didn't leave, I Feel Lost right now was started by many Texans who came in contact with a strong storm. Wow, I didn't know how hurricanes could could really be. If you ever hear that a hurricane is going to hit you, always take shelter and stay prepared for the big storm. Back to you in the studio. Good job, Eva. I've never been in a hurricane. Take it away, Kaylin, with pit bulls. Hello, my name is Kaylin, and I'm reporting live from LLU. Today's topic you ask? Pit bulls. They are not what their reputation says. In fact, I'm going to give you a few reasons why they are great dogs. For instance, pit bulls love to cuddle. Also, they don't require much grooming because they have short hairs. But you still have to check for ticks during tick season. Pit bulls are so loyal. If you are looking for a good friend, pit bulls are your perfect choice. Furthermore, pit bulls are eager to please us. We like to play outside. They are very active and good with kids. Also, if you need a good laugh, they are very funny. Their goofy smile and tail chasing will put a smile on any face. If you would like to adopt a pit bull, there are many great places, but I would recommend Via Lobos Rescue Center, in New Orleans, Louisiana. If you would like to see their great work, watch Pipples and Furlies on Animal Planet. Some states are banning these innocent animals. They say that the dogs are dangerous and ferocious. Let's change this now. Pipples make amazing pets and are so lovable. Please help save them. Back to you in the studio. Wow, that's why I love Pipples too. Nice job. Now Gavin with Kyrie Irving. Hello, Gavin here, and now we'll be reporting to you about an NBA All-Star. In September 2008, Kyrie Irving went to Montclair Kimberly Academy. That year, he racked up 1,000 points in school. He then got transferred to St. Patrick's School in New Jersey, where he was coached by Kevin Boyle. 
Kyrie, Kyrie later went to college at Duke University, where he was one of the top point guards in the country. In 2011, Kyrie Irving got drafted in round one and was the number one pick by the Cleveland Cavaliers. In 2016, Kyrie hit a buzzer beater in Game 7 versus the Golden State Warriors in the finals. This was just the beginning for Irving. After that year, he, he wanted to get traded because he felt like he wasn't being challenged. He would be happy if he got traded to the Boston Celtics because the Celtics needed someone who could lead the team. So the Cleveland Cavaliers made a deal with the Celtics. They traded Jay Crowder and Isaiah Thomas, and the Cavaliers would give the Celtics Kyrie Irving. Being a Celtic makes him happy because he's the leader of the team. Back to you in the studio. Last cool. but not least is Elijah with Dirk Winter Driving Safety. Hi, I'm Elijah, and I'm going to tell you about winter driving. The winter snow has arrived, which creates slippery, snowy roads. This can lead to stressful driving conditions. The great news, safety technology are being, inst are being installed to cars today. Have ever heard of traction control? Well, wait until you hear about this cool device. It's now standard to most vehicles. This device helps any car gain traction while driving on snowy or icy surfaces. Here are some tips for driving in the cold weather. Number one, warm up the car. Number two, no leave a car running in a garage. Number three, if the weather looks bad, wait until the weather looks good enough to drive. Number four, make sure you tell someone where you are going if you have to leave the house. Number five, Never leave your car when you're stranded. And also make sure you have these items in your car so you are ready for driving in the winter. Number one, blankets, warm socks, mittens, hats. Number two, first aid kit. Number three, flashlight with extra batteries. Number four, a ice scraper or a shovel. Number five, spare tires. Number six, jump cables. Jumper cables. <laughs> Number seven, a bag of salt. Uh, or a cat litter. Kind of weird, huh? And number eight, a toolkit. So if you're driving in the winter, be sure to remember these tips and be careful. Back to you in the studio. Good job, Elijah. Yeah. It's been a long day. Thank you for watching LLU News. Bye! Bye. Hi, this is MT News. I'm Kelly. These are my two co-hosts, Mama and Brian. P.S. The only reason I got this job is to keep them on track. Why not, Jim Kelly? Enough of this record. Now here's Joe with the Celtics. Hey, it's Joe here to talk to you about two of the greatest Celtics players ever. Let's start off with Robert Parrish. This guy is unbelievable. He's known as the Chief. His first NBA game ever was played for the Golden State Warriors on October 22, 1976. He played four seasons for the Warriors and he averaged 17.2 points per game and 12.1 rebound per game. But on June 9, 1980, the Warriors made a huge mistake. They traded Paris for a number one pick and a number 13 pick. That means they got the best player from college and the 13th best player from college. That's crazy. His first year with the Celtics, they won the finals alongside another great player, Larry Bird. Also, also, Robert played 21 seasons in the league. He is the oldest ever basketball player to play. When he retired, he was 43. That's old. Parrish also played the most games ever with a grand total of 1,611 games. Wow. Boston finally retired his jersey on January 18, 1998. Now his jersey lives at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Can you guess the most well-known Celtic ever? If you guess Larry Bird, you are right. On December 7, 1956, a legend was born in West Valley, Indiana. He attended Spring Valley High School, where some say that he spent every minute of his downtime playing basketball, even in between his classes. After high school, he enrolled into Indiana State, and in 1979, he won the NCAA double championship despite facing Magic Johnson. Also, he is still Indiana State's leading scorer, scoring a grand total of 2,850 points. That's crazy. Larry also got seven separate National Player of the Year awards. That's amazing, if you ask me. Then the Celtics drafted Bird six overall in 1998. If you ask me, he should have been the number one pick. Bird averaged 21.3 points per game and 12 and 10.4 rebounds per game during his rookie year. Bird also helped the Celtics win their first championship championship since 1976. He averaged a double double for his entire career, which means that he got 10 points or more, or more and 10 or more rebounds. 
Bird to finish his career with 69 triple-doubles, which means that he got 10 or more points, 10 or more rebounds, and 10 or more assists. He won three consecutive MVP awards between 1984 and 1986. Lastly, the Celtics retired the GOATS number on February 4th, 1993, and Larry joined Parrish in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Back to you in the studio. Wow, now I know what a triple-double is. I'm Larry Bird's biggest fan. Now here's Sarah with the Winter Olympics. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I will be talking about this year's Winter Olympics. This year's 2018 Winter Olympics will be hosted in Pyongyang, South Korea. On February 9, 2018, the Winter Olympics will start, and it will end on February 25th. Some people who will be competing for USA are Mame Viney, Michaela Schifrin, Alana Myers, Brianna Decker, and Kendall Coyne. Mame Viney is participating in the speed skating event this year. She is only 17 years old and the first black woman to qualify for Team USA speed skating team. That's amazing. Now on to Michaela Schifrin, who's competing in the sport of slalom. Slalom is a winding is a ski race and a winding course marked by flags and poles. She's 18 years old and in 2015 became the youngest athlete ever to win gold in the winter Olympic sport of slalom. Bobsledder Alana Myers Taylor is a 33 year old two time Olympic gold medalist. Alana was born in Oceanside, California. She has competed in the four men event with three male Bergman, which I think is amazing. Lastly, there is 26-year-old Kendall Coyne and 25-year-old Brianna Decker, who, will, who made it onto the women's hockey team. They are also women's champions at USA Hockey Arena. That is all for the Olympics. Back to you in the studio. Are you guys going to watch the Winter Olympics? Yes. No. Good to know. Now here's Ava with the African elephants in danger. Hello, this is Ava reporting about the African elephants. Do you like elephants just like me? Then you'll be devastated after you hear this. During the 1980s, African elephants, the largest walking animal on earth, were being killed for their ivory and meat. Soon elephants will never be seen again if people don't stop doing this. Fortunately, there's an organization called the WWF that stands for World Wildlife Fund, and they help endangered animals. With everyone's help, the African elephants could be protected. The African elephants are being killed. Hunters do it for money. These hunters have killed over 100,000 elephants. Wow, isn't that a lot? This all started in the 1980s and has just gotten worse since. In 2011, it increased and researchers saw the highest amount of elephant herds gone. Thankfully, the WWF World Wildlife Fund moved the African elephants to islands off the coast of Florida so they'd be safe. People placed chili bombs, which are solid blocks of chili, and placed them by the coast so they wouldn't go in. Elephants don't like the smell of chili, so this prevented the elephants from not going in the water. Overall, the African elephants need to be safe because they deserve a life just like your average cats and dogs. Now back to you in the studio. Poor elephants. Now I know that I can help. Now here's Haley talking to you about a book she has read herself. Hi, my name is Haley and I'm a fifth grader at Matthew Thornton School. The book I was reading was The War with Grandpa. The author is Robert Kimmel Smith. In this book, Grandpa wanted to visit Peter's house, but Grandpa took Peter's room. So Peter had to move his bedroom to the third floor way upstairs. Some would call this the attic. Peter wants his room back. The part in the story where Grandpa sleeps over reminds me of when my grandpa sleeps over. My grandfather sleeps over during the holidays. He doesn't get my room though. He sleeps on the couch. I recommend this book because grandpa is funny and Peter is serious. If you have a funny personality but can be serious, this is a book for you. Back to you guys in the studio. I read that book and also thought it was good. Now here's Mama talking about the Millennium Falcon. I mean Mile. I'm Mama reporting on your local news today. Did you know that the Millennium Mile was st started on the weekend of Thanksgiving in 1999? The founders of the Millennium Mile were John Mortimer, who is the main founder. He won three national high school track championships. John went to our very own Lunder High School. Matt Dowling, who is the co-founder, we went to Pinkerton High School. He was a four-time All-American. During the sixth annual Millennium Mile Road Race, a well-known runner was there. If you guessed Dean Caster, then you were right. Dean was the 2004 Olympic marathon medalist. That has a lot of history for run race. Oh, I almost forgot. In 2018, there was another million famous runner. I, it was me. I ran a mile. When I ran the landing mile, it was 12 degrees out. After the race, I was freezing cold and got hypothermia. I had to go to urgent care and was transported to the hospital. After that, it took one hour to get my blood pressure down. 
It was quite an experience that I'll never forget. Also, a friendly reminder, if you run this race, bundle up. Back to you in the studio. Wow, I never knew you ran the Millennium Mile. Yeah, you should run it next year. Now here's James about with blizzards. Hi, this is James here. Have you ever been in a blizzard? Well, if you haven't, here's some first-hand blizzard information for you. December through February is prime blizzard season, so if you're in that time of year, watch out. When a blizzard hits, it could affect all that live in the Northeast. This storm is also known as a nor'easter, which is much bigger than a blizzard. You're probably wondering how blizzards happen. Well, blizzards are usually formed when a jet stream or airflow dips far south. This allows the cold air that comes from the north to collide with the warm air coming from the south to make a blizzard, the perfect mix. When the cold and warm air water freezes in the cloud and makes snow, the amount of snowfall that falls from the sky depends on how much water is in the cloud and how fast the cloud is moving. Here, here are some safety tips to prepare for a blizzard. Yeah, sorry. Get a, f get a flashlight and some batteries, a warm blanket and some extra food in case you are stuck in the house for a while. Try to stay out of the cold so you don't get hypothermia. Thanks for watching. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, James. Now I know how to prepare for a blizzard. I have a long story about a blizzard. No, we don't have time for another story. Now here's Brian with flood safety. Hi, Brian here. I have a question for you. Have you ever been in a flood? If not, you should probably listen so you're prepared. Floods are unpredictable storms where hundreds of people can get hurt and even die. These waters destroy property and homes. I would not like to be in a flood. There's not a specific time when floods happen. They happen in all seasons and can happen in Western America or anywhere in the world. We could have a flood right here in NH. Rivers, creeks, storm tides, overflowing catchments, heavy rainfall, and cyclones are a few reasons why flooding can happen to you. What should you do when a flood happens? First, you should get an emergency kit. Second, you should know how high water level is. Third, have a place where your family meets if you get separated during the flood. Also, if you get a flood warning, you should unplug all your, of your electronics and raise your furniture off the ground. Also, roll up any rugs during a storm because the water can get trapped in a rug, so if you roll up the rug, it won't get ruined. I should probably go do that right now. Last, if you're in an area that is getting water quickly, you should check the water with a stick. However, if the water level is above your knees, keep your distance. The river could take you away. Flood is dangerous. Remember to always use caution around fast moving water that could be deeper than you think. Back to you in the studio. So a flood could happen right now? Yep. When I get home, I should prepare. Now here's Callie with barrel racing. Hey, it's Callie here, and I'm here to report to you about barrel racing. Barrel races began in 1948. Barrel racing happens throughout the year all across the United States. The WPRA and NBHA are two big barrel racing organizations that host large horse competitions. Here's some more on barrel racing, so tune in. Barrel racing was originally an all-women's event. That is very interesting. The women raced their horses through a figure eight pattern or a clover leaf pattern. The National Barrel Horse Association, NBHA, and Women's Professional Rodeo Association, WPRA, runs leveled competitions, which allows racers to compete at many skill levels. Can you believe the winner can receive up to $250,000? I wish I could get that kind of money for doing something that I love to do. Competitors with the highest yearly earnings are invited to the National Finals Rodeo where they get to compete for the title of world champion. That is really exciting and they are very lucky. Barrel racing is for everyone. Experienced and not very really experienced riders can work together and enjoy the fast-paced world of barrel racing. Back to you in the studio. Now I'm as hungry as a horse. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching MT News. Is it time for snack? Charlotte here. And Caleb. And, and we're, we're MTS, MTS News Station. Station. First up, we have Nolan here reporting about John Force drag racing. Hey guys, Nolan here. Never back up, never give up, never back down, and never lose faith. A great reminder and quote by John Force, owner and driver for John Force Racing Inc. Force started racing cars in 1978. John Force has driven all Chevy funny cars, which are cars with funny bodies. Did you know that? The summers for the Force family start in the same place and end in the same place at the racetrack. 
and they started a track called Auto Raceway in Pomona, Southern California. But this drag racing team can be found at many tracks all over the country. He has five people on his crew. Gary Densham, Mike Neff, Courtney Force, Metal, and Ashley Force. They are important parts to this drag racing team. Drag racing is two fast cars that race side by side down that go down a half mile track. Force has sponsors who give him money in return for free advertising on his cars. Drag racing is a lot of money and sponsors help with parts needed to build the cars. Peak Antifreeze, Auto Club, Traxxas, Monster Energy, Lucas Oil, and Mac Tools are a few of Force's sponsors. So get your tickets fast. Back to you guys in the studio. Why didn't you turn the oven off? I don't know. I'm sorry. Guys, I know that we're um, live. Oh, hey. Now we have Brianna reporting on rescue dogs. Hi, it's Brianna here. Let's talk about rescue dogs. Freya is a Labrador retriever. She works for, for the CEMAR, which is the Mexican Navy. Did you know that Freya rescued people after two major earthquakes in Mex Mexico City? The first earthquake was on September 7th. The second earthquake happened on September 19th. Frida is a hero because Frida is a dog. She has a strong sense of smell. This can help her find people who are under buildings that have fallen down because of earthquakes. In the two earthquakes in Mexico, Frida found 12 people that were still alive under a building. Frida is an amazing dog. Also, Frida has an instinct for hunting, which means that Frida won't give up until she finds what she's looking for. Frida can't just go out to rescue people. She needs to wear equipment to keep her safe. Protective goggles and protective boots are two examples of safety gear that Frida wears to do her job. I hope someday other dolls could be like Frida. So many lives could be saved after earthquakes like the ones in Mexico City. Now back to you in the studio. Whoa, I didn't know rescue dolls could be that important. Guys, I'm gonna run to Dunkin's. Do you want anything? Oh yeah, can I have a medium mocha chow, two creams and four pints of caramel? Charlotte, do you want anything? I wish, but we're kind of in the middle of something right now. Oh. Now we have Sam reporting on the NFL protest. Hey, it's Sam here. Have you ever seen or heard the NFL protest? On September 24th, 2016, more than 200 NFL players were sitting, kneeling, locking arms, or raising a fist during the national anthem. Some players even stayed in their locker rooms on their home field. They did this to raise awareness for racism and injustice in America. Did you know that almost all of the NFL teams are doing this? Football player Colin Kaepernick, quarterback of the 49ers, was the first person to protest when he knelt down during the Star Spangled Banner in 2016. President Donald Trump spoke at a rally on September 22, 2016 to respond to Colin's behavior. He said, wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when someone disrespects our flag to say he's fired? President Trump spoke for people who thought this protest was disrespectful. Football fans are divided. Some say they will boycott games, which means they will no longer go to the NFL games any longer. Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots, said, Players have the right to peacefully affect social change and raise awareness they feel is most impactful. Because of this protest, all of the TV channels that film the NFL games will no longer film the national anthem anymore, but they will film the national anthem for the Super Bowl. Now, back to you in the studio. I'm going to turn on the oven again. Not again. Now we have Joe reporting on tornadoes. Hi, I'm Joe. Today I'll be talking about four amazing but scary tornadoes. The first tornado hit Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana in 1840. Another dangerous storm hit Tuscaloosa, Alabama on April 27, 2011. The third tornado hit close to home in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1953. Lastly, on May 27, 1896, St. Louis was hit by its own powerful tornado. Wow! The Tri-State Tornado was the deadliest U.S. tornado with 695 fatalities, 2,027 injuries. 
It was called the Tri-Stewart Tornado because it hit three states. Its path length was 174 miles. The storm's total damage cost was $1.46 billion. That's a lot. Also, the St. Louis tornado had 255 fatalities and at least 1,000 injuries. Its total damage was estimated to be $2.56 billion. That's a lot of money. Next, the Tuscaloosa, Alabama tornado had 65 fatalities and 1,500 injuries. That's a lot of injuries. The total damage cost was $2.2 billion. Its path length was almost 81 miles long. That's a lot of miles. Finally, the Worcester, Massachusetts tornado had 94 fatalities. A total damage cost of $1.36 billion was the estimated amount of damage that this storm caused. The Worcester storm's path was 46 miles long in over 84 minutes. Unbelievable. Tornadoes are nothing to mess around with, and I'm glad I don't live in one of those areas. Now back to you in the studio. Wow, I didn't know that tornadoes can be that dangerous. Now we have Maeve reporting on the softball history. Hi, Maeve here. Would you like to know how softball started? On Thanksgiving, on, Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving Day in Chicago, Illinois in 1887, a Yale supporter was fooling around after a football game. He threw a boxing glove and called out play ball. Another guy had a broomstick and swung at the glove. Believe it or not, that's how the game of softball started. Over the years, people came up with their own rules of softball. The game was also called many th different things, such as diamond ball, mush ball, and pumpkin ball. Mush ball is my favorite. When in 1926, Was Walter Hawkinson came up with the name softball. As we all know, 92 years later, it is still called softball today. Another thing that has changed over the years is the size of a softball. At first, softball was 16 inches in circumference. Then, Lewis Robert Sr. came up with the 12-inch ball. Today, different sized balls are used for different age groups. At first, softball was played indoors. As it became more popular, people started the, playing the game outside. It was even, even added to the Summer Olympics in 1996. Wow, it might not be in the Olympics anymore, but it's still growing. Even I play it, and I love it. I can't wait to see what's in, coming in softball's future. Back to you in the studio. Wow, softball was around for 92 years. Yeah, right? Now we have Caleb reporting on Lionel Messi. Hey, it's Caleb here giving you news about Lionel Messi. A famous soccer player was born on June 24, 1987 in Rosario, Argentina. When he was a kid, he was diagnosed with an illness that stopped his growth. Spain offered to pay his medical bills if he came to train at their powerhouse soccer academy. Messi's whole family moved to Spain. When he was 16, Messi became the youngest player to score a goal for FC Barcelona youth soccer team. Then in 2012, Messi scored five goals in the championship game. He was the first player to ever do this. He continued to break records for scoring so many goals. In 2017, Lionel Messi was listed as one of the highest paid athletes in the world. He is worth $80 million. Wow, that's a lot of money. He also does commercials for Adidas, Pepsi, EA Sports, and Turkish Airways. That's news about Lionel Messi. Now back to you in the studio. Whoa, Messi is a good player. Now we have Charlotte reporting on Melissa Hoffman's Dance Center. Charlotte Betty here broadcasting about Melissa Hoffman Dance Center. First, MHDC is usually called Melissa Hoffman Dance Center and it has been around since 1989. There are over 500 students that have gone through the center. There are all types of dances you could try personally like ballet, tap, jazz, modern, lyric, contemporary, ballet bar, and hip hop. Safety is a number one concern at MHDC, so if you take a tumble class, they have mats on the floor. There are four rooms to dance in. If you take intensive, you could get onto team like me. Also, when you're older and you take intensive, you could get a solo like me. There are all kinds of different solos. Melissa Hoffman Dance Center is recommended by me because they give dancers the space they need. One teacher is Miss Sandy, Miss Karen, Miss Heidi, who teaches tumble teacher, and much more. And last, Mr. JR, who teaches tap, and much more. 
They take a lot of time out of the day to teach kids from two and up, and they will teach kids until eight at night. If you have a solo, then they will try to find an open space in the week. Miss Melissa is the owner of the studio and teacher. You know, dancing is very fun. Now back to you in the studio. We know how to dance. Yeah, that's all we have for today. Uh, dude, we still have Jacob. Oh! Now we have Jacob reporting on Jacob. Walt. Good afternoon, I'm Jacob McGrath reporting live from MTS News Station. Today I'm going to be talking about the history of Jacob the Lost Dutchman Waltz. Jacob Waltz was born in 1810 in Auberschwandes, Wordingsburg, Germany. Before he came to the U.S., he was a farmer, which was a popular trade in Germany in the 18th century. Waltz was 28 when he first left for New York on July 13, 1839, in search for a new life. It is noted that a young Indian girl named Ken T showed Waltz to a mine on Superstition Mountain in Superstition, Arizona. This mine is later named the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. History states the mountain was ruled by the Thunder God. Any gold removed from the enchanted mountain, it will cost you your life. Waltz, while, while out searching for gold, found and took some from the mountain, hid it in a box under his bed, and died on that very bed. The box of gold was never to be found. That's all I have today. Back to you in the studio. Now that's all we have for today. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching MTS News. News.